state, blah, blah, blah. It's everywhere. And the major reason is, of course, as I said, it links the uh, non-conscious and the conscious mind. So what are the kinds of uh, metaphors that we can use, an analogy, a simile? Now, NLP doesn't go into um, the differences, linguistic differences between an analogy or simile. Uh, it could be a personal anecdote, a joke, a quote, an idiom, a story, and stories are very powerful. Okay, briefly about uh, my experience as uh, in, with NLP. Uh, when I heard about uh, NLP, I was on a course in Marsin. It was very hot. It was like a furnace, in fact. But we were very happy with uh, doing training for the ministry teachers. Umit, you know very well the, the kind of format or training we used, we used to do. Yeah. And so this friend of, man, friend of mine was going on a course, uh, and that course would start like 10 days after our um, a training course. And I didn't, I didn't go. I, didn't, I decided not to go. Uh, probably because I, I didn't have enough money, like always, like all teachers. Um, uh, but I was talking to my late mother on the phone, and she said, well, if you want to go, I can pay her for your air ticket. Yippee! Tick! That done. That left the accommodation uh, issue to be sorted out. And this colleague said, well, why don't you come with me? I'm going to stay with my half-sister there, so you can uh, stay. Accommodation! Yippee! Tick! Then the passport issues were sorted out by my husband and I was ready to go. 10 days later, I was on a plane going to England, very happy. Um, as Coelho says, I'm sure that you know the alchemist very well. Coelho says, if your intention is pure, the whole universe uh, conspires in helping you to achieve your aim. So I think mine was a pure intention. And the course was like uh, comprised of about 12, 13 people, and there were people from different walks of life. So NLP is not a methodology for English language teaching only. There was even a nun from um, Africa. Uh, there were business people, there, were, uh, there was a mathematician, a teacher, and our course tutor, Jane Ravel, is also an English teacher. And she's co-authored two of the very good books, probably the only books written in NLP for ELT. Now, there I am. Uh, reading avidly in on the course and when I finished the course I thought I could dance with the concepts I learned what presuppositions were I learned what um, metaphor was I learned what perceptual positions were the uh, four columns of NLP the originators Bandler and Grinder I'm sure you've heard of uh, a mathematician and a linguist. And I learned that their aim was to uh, find the difference that makes the difference. What is it that people do successfully? If one person can do it, then obviously anybody can do it. So we learned all those techniques and I was happy dancing. Until came the master practitioner course, the second course. Of course, I felt myself a bit more confident and I learned, I understood, I realized that it was a methodology it was an attitude and the aim was to reach excellence at whatever you're doing. And in order to uh, achieve this aim, NLP offers you uh, patterns, strategies uh, to, that you can use with yourself and with others. And it's very much related to how NLP is related to how the mind works and focuses on how that intricate relationship between the conscious mind and the non-conscious mind uh, can be revealed and managed. Oops, sorry. There's your key back there. So after the practitioner course, I became sort of like a chef, uh, ready to create new dishes from the concepts that I'd learned in the practitioner course. I was quite something. And the final, after the trainer course, how do you think I felt? I felt very confident. <laughs> no, 
this is just joking aside. I think if you ask me what NLP is, uh, I would say that it is creating the best version of yourself. Right. I also teach a course on uh, at MA level, and this is uh, the cover of my class notes. So for a minute, can you think about why I chose uh, a dog in a fridge? <laughs> Very nice answers. Cat in a bag. Show the confusion. Chaos, unconscious mind. Well, actually, I was trying to show that NLP techniques are things that we actually use in daily life. Metaphor is something we use, for example, but we're not consciously aware of it. And dog also is something that we're very familiar with, but the way NLP places these things helps us to see things differently. You don't normally think of a dog in, in a fridge. What's wrong with thinking like that? Couldn't a dog be in a fridge? Why not? Would it create chaos? Well, I think it's a symbol uh, of my trying to say, looking at things in a different way. Okay, and metaphors are very useful once we understand uh, how our conscious and non-conscious minds work, and then it can guide us towards future action. And that is where the changed behavior will arise. Hopefully, Lakoff and Jan Johnson uh, are two people uh, that have uh, written about metaphors, so I suggest that as a very good reading. Okay, now comes the juicy part. Let's experiment with our metaphors. Your non-conscious mind is calling you. I'm sorry about that God is calling you. I couldn't erase God, but it could be God calling you. Why not? Um, so, are you ready? to accept or are you going to decline? Okay, fine. So our first activity is exploring your metaphors. Nazlo Jam, uh, I need to keep this and the uh, chat together on the same say, screen. Onu nasıl yapacaktım? Yani stop share yapmadan. Um, Hojam, you can pass to your new page. Wait, bir dakika, bir şey çıktı. Uh, and in that Requesting way we will be able control. to see your tamam. next... Remote control, veriyorum, approve. I think Gonja is interfering. Meh. Somebody's... Uh, I'm not going probably. <laughs> okay, well, um... I, I want you to, there's one more, learning. I want you to choose one of these uh, sentence stems and complete it. Okay, so let me get in the chat. Being a parent is like <laughs> being a gardener. I don't know, John, well done. Uh, by the way, I loved your metaphor in your plenary talk. Uh, teaching is like um, a Turkish movie. That was wonderful. Yeah, raindrop. 
sacrificing yourself, parents. Okay, maybe you can think of a symbol for who sacrifices things. Uh, Galip, can you find um, who sacrifices? Can we find a symbol? Learning is like an enjoyable journey. Okay, good. Like opening new words, constantly traveling. Very good. Like watering flowers. Excellent. Very good. Mm -hmm. Teaching. Like teaching like watering flowers, okay. Teacher sacrifice, <laughs> sacrifice themselves. Okay, now if we look at that, um, we can turn it more into a metaphor-like structure. Sibelo jump. Teachers sacrifice themselves. Can we turn that more into a metaphor-like structure? Teachers are like, um, who sacrifices himself? Find me an example and then we can put that. Hang in there, Galip, freedom fighters, okay. Um, superheroes, okay, fine. Teachers are like superheroes, fine. A soldier maybe, okay. Uh, parents or teachers are like superheroes because they sacrifice themselves, true? Okay, very good. Right, let me continue with the, uh, the next activity. Right. Now, we're going to do the same activity in a more structured way. Uh, in the first activity, we didn't add a reason. This is warming up students to their uh, journey with metaphors. Now, if you're doing this on yourself, using a metaphor on yourself might be somewhat challenging. So I would advise you to work with a friend. When you're working on yourself, it's hard to get in and out of that conscious and non-conscious modes. That's why it's difficult. So you better work with a friend. You can do activity one. If you're doing activity two, you uh, turn it into a more structured activity. Here, X is like Y, because you're going to uh, give a reason and you will give two lists to the learners. One is the concept source and the other is the concrete thing, the object. And learners choose they, and they find a link and they can work in, in groups. Okay, so on the left, you see um, abstract concepts. Actually, these are a lot of, used a lot in daily life. Uh, is there another one? Yes, truth. Okay, so what I would like you to do now is to uh, choose one concept, a source concept. What should we choose? Okay. Let's, let's have some fun. Let's choose men, okay? Uh, men are like, uh, can we? Okay, I won't restrict you. Just choose one of those. And try to formulate your metaphor. Time. A weather condition, is that for a man? A weather condition, happiness, okay? It's like taking a pill. It is again, uh, happiness is like taking a pill. Is that uh, in a positive sense or a negative sense? Can you elaborate on that? Positive, okay. Men are like a machine for whom to know how to use it. That reminds me, the uh, men are like uh, trains. Do you remember that? Men are like trains, you wait for them. What was the um, second part like? It was a hilarious comparison. Okay, anyway, fine. Let's do women.
Come on, guys. Like a weather, <laughs> weather condition. Because they often change their decisions. Superheroes, okay, good. Like wine, değil mi? Şarap, yaşlandıkça yıllanı, yıllan, <gülüyor> yıllandıkça yaşlan. <gülüyor> like melons, and these are women. <gülüyor> Excellent. Okay, let's take time now. Time. And can we um, compare it to a sickness? The flu, COVID. I'm, I'm pushing you now, right? I'm trying to get you to think in different ways. These are, these were your metaphors, maybe. Women to sickness. <laughs> well, some people would say women are like heartaches or stomach aches. If you take too much of them, then that causes acid in the stomach. You didn't like that, okay. Time, some people say time is money. You don't always have to say X is like Y. You can say directly time is money also. That's also acceptable. Okay, so this was, I'm going back to share screen. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, okay, so we have a lot of, um, truth would be interesting. Um, um, let me tell you what people say about good presentations. A good presentation is like a, can you guess, mini skirt. Short enough? Two? Cover all basics bare essentials maybe okay so uh let's move on time wise nazlo hocam 10 minutes me how much time do i have hocam we have nearly yeah 20 29 minutes of time we have no but i want to spare some time for questions of course uh then let's say 25 okay good. five minutes for a question and answer i think that's okay if you wanna of course extend the time for question and answer we I can actually, finish it earlier. I, I'll try to finish in... in uh, 15 minutes then. 15 minutes. And okay, 10, that's good. 10 minutes for question and answer. Right, because I have uh, six activities. I've come to the All third. Right. I think I can finish in, in 10, 15 minutes. Okay. All right. So, if we uh, want to use a text, we can. That could be uh, from a poem, from a... It could be a quotation or... A song, if you like. We're going to do a song in a few minutes. So this is from Halil Gibran, who I think you uh, will be familiar with, a Lebanese-American poet who died very young, unfortunately, but very powerful poems. This is taken from his book, The Prophet. Okay, so again, I'm asking you to uh, have a look at this. If we were doing this face to face, I would ask you to turn to your partner. You can turn to your window if you like, talk to your window. Um, so what is uh, the, uh, the poet uh, trying to say here? Uh, back to chat. Never control others, okay. But well, we can't see the poem. See, I can't have both the chat and the share screen at the same time, Aydan Ojan. 
if I go into this, I lose the chat for some reason or other. Okay, let me go back. Let me show you that again. Uh huh. It's right here. Very good. Well done. I think someone helped. God is helping me. Okay, that's the first line sing and dance together and be joyous. But let each of you be alone, like even the strings of a lute are alone, though they quiver with the same music. Ah, Chokizal, Nurdan Aljam, well done, thank you. Stay, Chokizal, stay together, but don't push to get each other. Very good, unity, mm -hmm. okay. Now, I use this poem to write on, um, as, on, on a card for a wedding gift to young people who were getting married. I think it's good advice. Yep, individuals supporting each other, Ex absolutely. So you can choose a literary text if you like, uh, depending on uh, the level of your, uh, the, the English level of your students, or depending on how much time you have uh, to spare for this. Okay. Now, if we want to use it as in-class material, yeah, as part of reading or writing or um, speaking or listening, you can use a song. And the sample song I'm going to use here is called The Rose by Amanda McBroom. You can use it as a listening task. Do you know the song? Let me sing the first line for you. Some say love, it is a river. Some say love. Amanda McCroom sings much more beautifully than I do. So, as you're listening to this song, can you please um, find the singer's own metaphor? Nazlı hocam, şimdi hem lirikleri gösterip hem e, videoyu um, stop share yapamayacağım. <gülüyor> New share. Hocam, i̇ki New share. sayfayı aynı anda böyle küçülterek ekrana koyabilirsiniz. Burada bir share daha var. Onu şey yapmayacağım herhalde değil mi? Bunu nasıl küçültüyorum Nazlıcığım? Hocam yukarıda solda üç seçenek var ya biri kapat ortadaki küçült yandaki en sağdaki de şey büyüt o ortadakine basarsanız ekran küçülecektir. Böylelikle Orada, ortada bir şey görmüyorum yalnız ben Hocam, bunu kap kapatsam Hocam escape yapın aşağı ha, inme tamam. escape yapın yandan daraltalım. Tamam. Ya da direkt desktop'u paylaşın ikisini birden böyle küçük pencere açalım. Stop share. Şimdi şurada ben ee, videom burada da şeyi e... Well, I'll show you maybe the lyrics later on, huh? What do you think? Um, hocam yani eğer şey şarkıyı dinlemek yetecekse e, ekranda slaytınız kalsın biz dinleyelim dinlerken sorunuzu da görerek cevaplarız videoyu görmek gerekecek mi? Ya bir dinleyelim.
Hocam biz duymuyoruz. Hocam evet şu an çalıştırdınız mı? Evet. Hocam ekran paylaşma yaparken altta bir e, kutucuk var. Bilgisayarın sesini paylaş diye. Allah Allah. Bu da çok komik. Nerede var dedin? E, hocam ekran paylaşımını yaparken altta bir kutucuk var. Bilgisayarın sesini paylaş diye. E, tekrar ekran paylaşım butonuna basın hocam. Şimdi burada tabii o şeyler... <laughs> My husband's AutoCAD is coming up. We're going to do AutoCAD now in a few minutes. Biz görmüyoruz hocam şu an. Ay tamam süper çok, çok iyi yani. <laughs> Şimdi share screen dedikten sonra Evet önünüze gelen pencere de hocam altta bir kutucuk var. Alttaki kutucuk hangisi yavrucuğum? Hocam sol alt köşede olması lazım. Share computer sound. Evet. <gülüyor> tamam tıkladım. Şimdi hocam ekran paylaşım başlatın hocam. Share. Ama işte e, video da aşağıda duruyor. Dursun hocam bir e, bir saniye biz yeni görmüyoruz. Videoyu hocam efendim. Bu çift macitlik yapıyorum ama link şurada şu an chat box'taki ise e, mesela açıktı da... video demin çalıştırdım ya Goncacığım. Ha açıktı tamam. Tabi. Yani bunun ekranda durup Hocam isterseniz ben paylaşayım videoyu. Ee, video açıktı tabi burada. Olur. Olur. Tamam. Ben, tamam. ben paylaşıyorum hocam. Tamam. And ben de McBroom The Rose. Ama e, hangi video? E, alttaki video ilk değil de e, hareketli olan video. Tamam. tamam. Okay. Güzel, güzel. Some say love it is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed some say love it is a hunger tamam kapatabilirsin bu kadar yeter bence okay thank you so you have the lyrics here So, if you do it as a listening task, you obviously need to give um, one gist listening, which you can do and say, what is her uh, favorite metaphor for love? And obviously, it comes out as the rose, right? So, for second listening, you can um, ask learners as the specific reading, You can ask learners what are the other metaphors that she mentions. Or if you're doing it as a reading text, you can obviously give the lyrics and do it. And there are zillions of uh, websites that have, uh, that talk about metaphors uh, in, in songs. Okay. Now, 
uh, the uh, activity five metaphors for learning. Now, since you've had, you've been listening to me for like 40 minutes, uh, I would like to get feedback from you, but I would like your non-conscious mind to respond to me. So I'm gonna ask you to think of one animal, one ad vegetable or a piece of furniture. Let's do it as an animal. But if you want to, you can also choose a vegetable. So think of me as a presenter and Make a comparison, please. For example, in one session, I was doing to Anadolu University students, uh, very hesitantly, uh, one of the um, students in the audience said, um, you look like a snake. And I said, snake? <laughs> okay, so what makes you say that? He says, you've got a leopard skin uh, blouse and I can hear you when you're speaking. So obviously that taught me something that from, uh, for him, uh, when he was listening to me, that those were the two aspects he was listening to. Now, I wouldn't be able to get such comments out of him if I had talked to him for hours. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go into the chat box now again. Chat box, chat box, chat box. Okay, so animal. Call the ambulance. <laughs> Call the ambulance. I don't know, Jim, I'll ask you later about that. Like a bee, okay? Uh -huh. For that guy. What do you mean? For that guy? <laughs> um, one of the students in the audience at Anadolu University Group, Turtle. Oh, thank you. Um, when I asked my grandson, oh, thank you. Oh, owl, I love owls, like a bird. Um, I asked my grandson how he saw cute kitten. <laughs> meow, meow. Uh, I asked my grandson what he thought his uh, English teacher was like. He thought for a moment and he said, like a very dark tiger. And I didn't understand much, of course, but uh, his mother explained that the, the English teacher has dark skin and dark hair, and I think has got a lot of hair. So for him, the impression is, you know, like a tiger and the, uh, the appearance is important. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Back to it. Up, oh, we're running out of time. Um, the last activity is um, stories. And stories are extended metaphors or deep metaphors. Remember what we started out with? That was a simple metaphor. As we go towards the extended metaphor, we can uh, add reasons and we can uh, use more complicated connections uh, with adult learners, for example. So story, has a deeper effect and also it's very palatable, very tasty than in direct communication. And let me tell you, in all my years dealing with students, nobody likes direct suggestion. Yeah, and nobody likes to be told, do this, don't do that, right? But indirect suggestions are welcome. That's what the um, non-conscious mind likes. So when you're telling a story, uh, the conscious mind is busy trying to figure out what that means. And then you can slip in the message to the uh, uh, non-conscious mind. Okay, I'm gonna continue with the last bit story. Um, this is a student of Milton Erickson who I would, uh, whom I would advise uh, exploring into, he's a great guy. He was a very, very amazing hypnotherapist. And his style of hypnotherapy was quite uh, outrageous. He used metaphors a lot. So I turned that part, the metaphor, the knowledge comes from Milton Erickson, um, his influence. Um, so remember that when we're telling our children to do something, that doesn't work. 
But indirectly, if you're making suggestions, for example, through metaphors or by telling a story, that will work. That may work. There's no guarantee, of course. Uh, my mother was quite an expert at this. She would, of course, tell me to do things and not to do things. But when it was serious advice time, she would always start with, I have a friend who. And the characters of the story would be giving uh, advice to the protagonist of the story, which reminds me, I don't know, Jump. I love the protagonist, the villain. <laughs> okay, so uh, stay away from moral preachment. Um, now we're gonna work with stories. Um, the Naked Truth and Parable is from my uh, practitioner course notes. It is by a uh, preacher uh, Haraf Yaakov Kranz, who was also known by the name uh, Maggot of Dubno. He was Lithuanian, but he was an immense speaker. And uh, Naked Truth and, and Parable, which I will start now. Naked Truth walked down the street one day. People turned their eyes away. Parable arrived draped in decoration. People greeted Parable with celebration. Naked Truth sat sad and unattired. Why are you so miserable? Parable inquired. Naked Truth replied, I'm not welcome anymore. People don't want me. People chase me from door to door. Mm. It's hard to look at Naked Truth, Parable explained. Let me dress you up a bit. You're Welcome will be gained. Parable dressed naked truth in stories, fine attire, with metaphor, poignant prose, and plots to inspire, with laughter and tears and adventure to unveil. Together they went forth to spin a tale. People to open, people, sorry open their doors and serve them their best. Naked truth dressed in story was a welcome guest. Like the story? Okay, chatted on me, Martuk. Right. Um, this is a very powerful effect. And if there was time, I would ask you, what the, the message of the story is, but you can, uh, there are two things you can do with metaphors, whether simple metaphors or uh, deep metaphors. You can just tell the students what they are and offer no explanation and forget about it, or come back to it weeks later, or you can consciously analyze it if you like. The Eagle is another, is another story that I love. I think it doesn't belong to anyone. It's, it's um, found everywhere got seven minutes, huh? Um, once upon a time in a village on the top of the mountain, sorry, I forgot. Top of the mountain, there lived an eagle family. And one of the eagles laid eggs, one of which rolled down and down and down at the bottom of the hill to a chicken farm. The chickens looked at this bigger than normal egg, but they protected it. An elderly chicken took her under her wings. And one day the egg hatched. An eagle came out, little eagle, but there were all chickens around her. She thought she was a chicken, but every day she would look up at the sky and look at all those eagles flying. Wow, they're flying so gracefully. I wish I could learn how to fly like them. But no, she wasn't meant to be an eagle. She was meant to be a chicken. 
And although she looked at the sky every day, she died a chicken. I think this has got a powerful uh, message as well, don't you think? Stop share. I see Nazlo just smiling. Hujam, I didn't want to intervene with your presentation and time beautiful story, but we have six minutes time. Okay. Um, if you wanna end your presentation, we okay, can I will. Move on with the, the questions the giant, and comments. Let me tell the story of the giant as well. Okay, share screen. Yeah, I mean, we lost time with the uh, technological stuff. Okay. The giant uh, is from this book. Um, once upon a time, on the top of a mountain, lived an enormous giant. who terrorized the inhabitants of the castle. And every day, every year on the same day, at the same time, he would come down to the castle walls and terrorize them. Come send me your bravest man and I will fight him. And every day a poor valiant soul would come out and the giant would kill him, would kill him instantaneously. One day a prince arrived town. Why is everyone looking so proud, so miserable? Well, you don't know about the giant, the inhabitants said. Well, we'll see about that. And when it was time for the giant to ask for another poor soul to come out, the giant came out again and said, come send me your bravest man or I will terrorize you. And then the, the young prince came out he said, yes, I'm here. And he noticed the in, uh, enormity of the, uh, the height of the giant. It was like six, seven meters tall. But as he walked towards the giant, the giant's size seemed to shrink. He continued to look in the, eye, in the eyes of the giant and he became even smaller. Now he was one centimeter small. And then he took his sword and killed the giant. And on his dying breath, he whispered to the giant, what is your name? And the giant, on his dying breath, said, my name is Fear. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It was uh, excellent to be with you. I hope we had more time. Let's look at chat, chat, if we have any. Three minutes. Yeah. Uh, Bena Hocam, thank you very much for this wonderful workshop. We loved your energy. And thank you. um, the positive emotions you gave, you uh, showed to us. Yeah, your presentation was great, I can say. Um, thank you. I think every participant agrees with me on this. Okay, good. Everybody uh, wishes the best to you, uh, Bena Ujam, and Sam. I can see, yes. Clear. I can yeah. see. Drama queen. <laughs> Drama queen. Sibosh, <laughs> get lost. <laughs> New questions? Okay, you want make me a promise, everyone. Are you going to use the metaphor in your classes? Huh? Huh? Yes. You're amazing too. I've enjoyed this presentation because you're there. When can we be honored to listen to? Ah. They want to know. Do you have a planned um, session, Mojang? Uh, Sibosh, I have, future. I think, is a, has a session for me in uh, April. April, I think, but uh, before that, I don't have anything planned. 
Yes, uh huh. We will have one. I can come into your dreams, don't worry. Call me and I can come into your dreams. That's when the unconscious, the unconscious, non conscious is working constantly. The conscious mind sleeps. What is your metaphor? Ah, uh, jokes. Rose, Rose, I, li I like the rose. Thank you for asking. Rose, because it's, because it's colorful, it's got energy, it's got love. Uh, in fact, I'm uh, planning on getting a tattoo on my arm, uh, but I'm, I have to find a place where the skin doesn't sag, you know? So it has to be in an, in a, in an appropriate place, maybe on the shoulder. The rose, yes, definitely. Energy, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I enjoy, I love what I do. Teaching, learning, yes, I don't know, John. You were great too. I loved the metaphor of the Turkish movie. I loved that. Um, Nazojam, is this recorded? Uh, was um, this? Yes. Shall I stop recording? No, no, it's okay. But you know, some people couldn't attend the session and they want to see a recording. If you could Madame, provide, I'm, I'm terribly sorry for not uh, getting permission from you before the presentation. Uh, while you were delivering your workshop, we were at the same time uh, negotiating it with the organizers, and we okay. immediately decided to do. But if you don't, we will will not, of course, uh, publicize this. No, no, no. I would like everyone to participate. I know that people couldn't attend because they yeah, were... Yeah, we thought the same way, Hojong. Okay? We started recording. Maybe just a few minutes later than we started, but we recorded it. Gone, Hojong. Thanks for this wonderful conference. You are amazing. Really amazing. Uh, Hojong, one of our um, uh, participants amazing. asks if uh, is it if, if it is possible for you to share your slides with the audience? Uh, sure, I can. But I I didn't uh, use a lot of writing on the for, for the first part of the. If you have noticed, I use images more. But towards the end, to, for the active, and that's on purpose. I did that on purpose. I usually use a lot of writing on my slides, but this time because this was an unconscious uh, uh, conscious thing. I did that. Sure, I can. Um, uh, I can send them to you, Nazoja. Okay, we and will uh, edit uh, on our web page, entire okay. web page. Okay. Uh, would it be a problem with a parable, for example? That's from my NLP notes. Would it be a problem? No, I guess. Publishing. It's kind of publishing, publishing in a website. Yeah. No. Okay. Fine. I will say that it's for my notes. I think you're going to close. I don't want to stim ya. Thank you. I'm Touching your I extra comments, Thank you. Questions. I think that's all. Um, yeah, Gonjo Jam, would you like to say anything as a closing remark? Because I truly enjoyed this workshop. And thank you, Bena Hojam, very much. Uh, as yeah. I said, for your energy, we Pleasure. need it so much, especially in those pandemic times. So thank you. And Pleasure. thank you to participants as well. All contributors and participants, the presenters, the listeners, everyone, because, well, they're great. And also all the interaction here. I was a bit worried about the interaction because of the COVID. We had to have the conference online. It should be face-to-face -face normally. You know, Gonja, can I, can I interrupt you for a minute? Yeah, please. In fact, I called Aida Noja on the phone to congratulate her, and she said, how the hell, I'm sorry, how on earth, <laughs> sorry, how on earth are you going to do a workshop? And I said, I have no idea. <laughs> well, well, we could. Actually, I mean, no, 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 the interaction is great. Okay, no, well, I, I was really worried whether how, how we could handle the interaction. Nobody would like to talk to themselves looking at a screen, but it was great. Thank you. No, oh, the audience was great. I was uh -huh. a failure with the technology trying to go in between <laughs> screens. <laughs> Life is a joy of learning. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks a lot, Bela Hocam. Efendim? Thanks a lot. You're most welcome, dear.